Yesterday, the Free Software Foundation gave humanity a small glimmer of hope for a better future by announcing one of the most ambitious open source projects of our time, the Libra Phone, the Freedom or Liberty Phone. The modern man is a slave to this dark little rectangle. The average person clocks in 6.66 hours of screen time daily, and if you're Gen Z, it goes up to 9 hours, no cap. But those are rookie numbers for South Africans who grind out 9 hours of screen time daily. By watching this video, you're becoming a statistic and quite literally draining your consciousness to Silicon Valley ad companies like Google and Facebook. It's a problem we should have seen coming when Stanley Kubrick and Arthur C. Clarke tried to warn us with the black cuboid in 1968, but it's too late now. Not only are we all addicted to the monolith, but with digital IDs rolling out around the world against the will of the people, it'll soon be impossible to put food on your family without a 24-7 spyware loaded smartphone in your pocket. In today's video, we'll look at the world of open source mobile tech and find out if there's any hope for technological freedom in our future. It is October 16th, 2025, and you are watching The Code Report. Maybe you've never heard of the Free Software Foundation, but virtually every human on planet Earth uses its software daily. From the GNU tools that power Linux and Android, to the GCC compiler, and the GPG encryption that secures your emails, the Free Software Foundation's work is quietly running underneath almost every device, server, and app that you touch. It was started 40 years ago by Richard Stallman, and yesterday they announced a new initiative called the Librephone. They've tapped legendary hacker Rob Savoie to lead the charge, the guy behind OpenStreetMap and the guy who made Flash work on Linux before it was cool with Nash. The mission is to replace every closed source bit on your phone with open source freedom. But you might be saying, wait a minute, Android is already an open source Linux-based operating system. That's true, but only technically. In reality, most of the software that makes your phone actually work, from the modern firmware to the camera drivers and Google Play services, is all locked down proprietary code. The Librephone wants to rip out all these blobs and replace them with fully free software. You see, your phone isn't just open source on paper, but free is in freedom in practice. But if you're already based, you might be using Lineage OS to bypass Google spyware. Well, apparently, Lineage links significant proprietary code, and FSF board member John Gilmore said, quote, Rather than accept this sad situation, I looked for collaborators to reverse engineer and replace those proprietary modules with fully free software for at least one modern phone. It's a no cause, but reverse engineering all the firmware and binary blobs on a smartphone is a massive undertaking. This was already tried once before with Replicant, an early FSF-backed attempt to create a fully free Android fork. It did work technically, but adoption was almost non-existent. Only a handful of devices were supported, and most users just aren't willing to give up basic features like Wi-Fi, cameras, GPS, etc. to run free software. And even if the Libra phone somehow pulls it off, the Apple-Google duopoly is practically unbreakable. These two companies control the hardware, the operating system, the app stores, the payment rails, and have massive lobbying efforts in government at a time when governments are rolling out digital ID systems, contact tracing, and app-based verification platforms that are tightly integrated into these ecosystems. The mobile ecosystem feels hopelessly locked down, but the Librephone might be the only thing that can liberate us from this dystopian crony surveillance state, while preserving all of the features that we need to maintain massive amounts of screen time daily. That means there's going to be a lot of code reviews, and that's why you need to know about CodeRabbit, the sponsor of today's video. They just announced a new Codex integration that allows it to execute CodeRabbit reviews directly in your development workflow. So now, you can tell Codex to review your latest changes, and the CodeRabbit CLI will surface specific issues on everything from simple styling errors to more complex architectural problems. From there, you can approve the proposed fixes and tell Codex to apply the changes, or you can just allow the whole thing to happen autonomously in the background until the code can actually pass the review. CodeRabbit CLI is free to use, and you can install it using the command on screen or by checking the link below. This has been the Code Report. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.